Hi, this is Nico Williford and Manos Brilakis presenting case 290 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case that shows some of the challenges associated with crossing CTOs that have a well-developed bridging collateral network. This is the lesion. The patient came with medically refractory angina and he had a CTO of the right coronary artery. There's not much feeling from the septals, but what we're seeing here is this uh, well-developed network of ipsilateral bridging collaterals that goes from the proximal vessel to the distal vessel and fills it. To describe the CTO, we do have a well-developed uh, but blunt proximal cap. We do have a short length, about 20 millimeters. Distal vessel is of good quality. And we have this network of bridge and collaterals. Our plan was to first try with undergrade wiring, although we knew that there was a significant risk of the wires getting into the bridge and collaterals or causing a perforation. Therefore, the plan was to not be extremely aggressive doing undergrade wiring. If that didn't work, do a brief attempt for retrograde, even though we did not see retrograde filling through septal collaterals. And if that did not work, uh, do undergrade dissection and reentry. As uh, we had predicted, the undergrade guide wires, these are polymer jacketed wires, uh, uh, Filder XTA, Gladius Mongo, kept on entering into these bridges. And the same thing here we can appreciate in the array of view. Essentially, we were unable to advance uh, the guide wire into the cap. It kept on entering in those bridging collaterals. We thought maybe trying a little stiffer wire could help uh, stay within uh, the intra plaque segment, but unfortunately, the same thing happened. This is a guy on next one, and it still it seems to be going into those collaterals. As we had planned, we decided to go retrograde, even though we did not see a continuous connection from the LAD to the PDA. We did surfing using a SUO3. Here it's going into a cavity. Uh, we are pulling it back and then we're redirecting. We also use the Sion Black that can sometimes be very useful at the CC0 collaterals that don't have a visible connection between uh, the uh, proximal vessel and the distal vessel. The wire seemed to enter in some sort of septal and turn around. However, when we did the injection, the wire is clearly not uh, in the PDA, it's somewhere in the septum. Therefore, we decided to switch to base or balloon assisted subintimal entry. And this is the most common technique for getting into the extra plug space intentionally. The way it works is we advance a slightly oversized balloon into the proximal vessel, inflate it, while having a microcatheter with a polymer jacketed wire, usually a Gladius Mongo, next to it. The balloon hopefully causes a dissection into the wall of the vessel that then can be entered with a polymer jacketed wire that can be advanced extra plaque close to the distal vessel. And this is discussed on video 8.2.7 for the manual of CTO intervention. This is what we did. We brought in a 4.0 millimeter balloon, slightly oversized in the proximal vessel. We do have a turnpike LP microcatheter right next to it. And essentially, we inflated the balloon and tried to push the Gladius Mongo wire. And the Gladius Mongo seemed to advance extra plaque, and now it seems to be sitting at the distal cap. There is a trifurcation of two acute marginals and the distal right coronary artery. And the same thing is seen over here with um, the wire being knuckled at the trifurcation. We had difficulties and lost wire position, so we ended up repeating the process. And this time, we started the dissection a little bit more proximal. And now we see that the guide wire, which is again a Gladius Mongo, wraps around the balloon, wraps around the vessel, and then gets into a vessel, which is probably one of the acute marginal branches. We did do an undergrade injection, even though we typically avoid this in ADR, but here we had no other way for visualizing. And sure enough, uh, the wire is in one of the acute marginal branches of the distal cap, the more superior one. How to get out of the side branch and go into the main vessel? The best way is to use what's called a side base technique. Very similar to the base, but the difference is that the balloon is halfway into the main vessel and halfway into the side branch that has been entered with our previous wire, and then that prevents 
another wire from following the pathway of that side branch instead helps it go down the extra plug space in the main vessel. We brought in a Sasuke, brought a second guide wire in, and then we inflated a 2.0 millimeter balloon inside uh, the acute marginal branch, and that was uh, very useful because the knuckle formed and the knuckle now is moving along the course of the vessel. So very nice, successful side base technique. We then uh, were able to deliver a Stingray balloon all the way down to the re-entry zone, which wasn't very difficult since the patient did not have a significant calcification. Uh, the balloon is not very visible. And then we did re-entry with uh, the stick and drive technique. This is a guy on X2. We see it exits the Stingray balloon proximal to the proximal marker and then seems to be going along the course of the vessel. Are we in? Again, we had to inject uh, epsilaterally, which we like to avoid, but the wire seems to be moving in the right direction. So we switched it for a workhorse guide wire and perform intravascular ultrasound. That shows that we have uh, some extra plaque hematoma distally, but we are inside the true lumen. Again, a little more prominent hematoma as we come more proximally. And now here we're extra plaque with the true lumen being up at 12 o'clock. And as we move uh, further back up, we're in the proximal vessel in the true lumen. We place three drag eluting stands from the distal RCA all the way to the proximal right coronary. And that provides a nice result. We have a TIMI3 flow. Interestingly enough, we still see the network of those ipsilateral bridge and collaterals, but fortunately we did not see any perforation. And we have good feeling distally. Thankfully, uh, these acute marginal branches remained patent, which is important because loss of these branches can cause right ventricular failure and in some cases cardiogenic shock. We confirmed that the left side did not have any injury and uh, the patient did very well. So to summarize, this is an example of how bridging collaterals can create obstacles in crossing CTOs. Once again, the main concern is if that that if the wire gets into those bridging collaterals, it can cause perforation. Retrograde didn't work in this case, but uh, what we did is ADR, undergrade dissection re-entry, with the base technique for the proximal cap. We got the guide wire into the extra plug space. The wire went into a side branch, so we overcame this by doing the side base technique, once again ballooning the side branch, Gladius Mongo polymer jacketed wire, avoid the side branch, and get into the distal extra plug space, followed by Stingray re-entry. Fortunately, the distal vessel was of large caliber and re-entry was fairly easy. Thank you.